Hi there. This is Rob McLean from LearnToCruiseOnline.ca. Welcome to episode 13 in the Connected Boat series. This episode focuses on future-proofing your boat. In past episodes, we've talked about a lot of developments in marine electronics, which essentially translates into lots of opportunities to spend money. But none of us can do everything or do everything at once. So my general guidance from my own experience is to take things step by step, linked to your cruising plans and where you want to be and what is needed to support that, and your budget. At the same time, I suggest developing a long-term vision so that your incremental purchases along the way help you move to where you want to end up. Also, work with what you've got. From my own experience, I know that some older equipment may still have lots of years of service. And monitor the open boat and DIY initiatives because there's lots going on there that I think will have interesting and positive future implications. I've developed some design principles which I've been trying to apply in planning my own boat network, which I thought I'd share with you. Essentially, it boils down to defining a core of essential systems and data sources and working to create redundancy and backups for those sources. Aim to have more than one way to display all key navigational data. And with new multifunction displays and mobile devices, that's becoming easier all the time. You want to try to avoid having a single point of failure, that is, one device, which, if it failed, would disable the entire network. One of the things I've tried to do is avoid supporting vendors who want to lock me into a proprietary walled garden or who use planned obsolescence to force me to upgrade constantly. And I suggest you embrace the open boat initiatives. Assume that Signal K and Ethernet-based boat networks will become a major force in future years and that the experiments that people are doing with inexpensive microprocessors are going to create alternatives to the expensive high-end commercial equipment. In the next few slides, I'll try to provide some insights on how we've tried to translate those principles into action in upgrading our Colvin Pipistrella schooner interlude. Interlude was built in 1985, and in general, her systems reflect that. We had analog depth and wind instruments, analog engine instruments, an old Furuno 1721 radar, which still works and did have some NMEA 0183 capability, an older Robertson AP200DL autopilot, Again, still works, although one of the control boards has fried, so I need to replace that. Uh, it, it also had some NMEA 0183 capability. There was a Garmin GPS Map 152, which we've retained as a backup GPS. There was a newer Garmin 2006 uh, plotter. It came with charts for Florida. This is a perfect case study of what I mean by planned obsolescence because even though the unit still worked fine, less than 10 years after it was produced, it was virtually impossible to get new charts for it. There were two VHF radios, both uh, pre-DSC, and an older EPIRB unit. In the past couple of years, we've uh, added a number of things while trying to keep our annual expenditures on electronics to about a thousand a year. We added a Vesper XB8000 AIS transponder which also provides GPS and multiplexes NMEA data over the network. We added a, a modern Standard Horizon VHF capable of displaying the AIS da data from the Vesper unit. I had a older GC2020 amateur high-frequency transceiver 
which uh, transferred from another boat. Uh, the interlude already had an insulated stay to use as an antenna. We got a BitStorm Wi-Fi unit for internet access in and around marinas and a Wilson cell phone signal booster for cell and data access up to 40 nautical miles offshore. And we replaced the alternator regulator. Here are the projects we're currently working on. We're planning to add an Airmar DST-800 smart sensor that will provide depth, speed, sea temperature onto the N2K network, but we'll keep the existing analog uh, depth instrument uh, for redundancy. We've acquired a Yacht Devices text display, which provides a relatively inexpensive way to get N2K data displayable in the cockpit. I'm building an Arduino Douay-based custom boat monitor. This has a variety of sensors connected to it and can feed data from those sensors onto the network. And when the boat is moored or anchored, it monitors selected sensors, such as the build and battery volt voltage, and is able to send email or text alerts. I came across Thomas Sarlandi's K-Box project and uh, bought one. It's an Arduino-based system that also multiplexes NMEA data. It will shortly support Signal K, and I've been contributing to this open source project some code that will enable it to act as a backup autopilot control and also operate as a multifunction display and alarm system. We're planning to acquire a new alternator that has a backup internal regulator. I'm experimenting with OpenCPN and uh, also with uh, RTL-SDR as an AIS backup on a Raspberry Pi. And also on the list is a new EPIRB, some AIS man overboard devices, and looking ahead to satellite communications for offshore in the coming years. To summarize everything and show how the design principles were applied, here are three slides that demonstrate what the core functions are, how those core functions are currently supported in the existing configuration, the redundancy or backup that is available, and the things that we're considering for the future to add to the functionality on the boat. Key thing to note is that I teach navigation and cruising and I'm a traditionalist. So everything electronic on the boat has a traditional non-electronic backup system. I won't comment in detail on all of the items on these charts. I'll leave you to uh, review them at your leisure. Uh, if you have any questions about what we're doing, feel free to contact me. This concludes our discussion of feature-proofing your boat and in fact concludes the entire Connected Boat series. If watching any of these episodes has given you new ideas, our mission has been accomplished. Good luck, see you online and on the water. For ongoing insights about inexpensive and DIY marine electronics, stay tuned to learntocruiseonline.ca.